again I don't see a, a construction permit here which is surely not legal and it's not typical but it looks as though uh, these buildings are being torn down or rehabbed or something which is fine with me because they've been quite an eyesore <laughs> all these years and the uh, old barn or shed or whatever it, it was is gone now. I did a couple of, I've done several clips over the past couple of weeks that I haven't bothered to post because I, I didn't think that they were really very good quality or very interesting. And this one might not be either, but I wanted to address um, several things. Let me try to focus here on this Monday outside Paris, France in 2012 um, about the Europe situation. For some time now, I've been hearing this sort of sour grapes stuff. Like, oh, the Eurozone, the Euro is collapsing, there are riots, you know, people are freaking out over there, it's not working, countries are going to pull out. And a lot of this rhetoric seems to be coming from the United States and England, which have their own problems and their own agendas. And I keep getting the impression that it's some sort of false flag sort of thing, you know? Uh, I only know what I see and hear, and I do know people in quite a few countries over here, including Scandinavia, some, are which, some of which are in the Euro and some of which are not. And um, I have some contacts in the Middle East. And I still write letters, you know. I still do snail mail. <laughs> and I ask people, how are things where you are? And even in Egypt, you know, I'm not, I'm not getting any panic, really. Uh, so I would say take things with a grain of salt and... Uh, try to be objective you know uh, just because things seem pretty calm over here doesn't mean that they're okay but uh, eh, you know whatever's being presented to you in the media or even whatever people you know and trust are telling you directly that's their own that's their own point of view and they have their own reasons even if they're very good and honest reasons for telling you what they're telling you. Um, one thing that I've been wanting to talk about is uh, back in January of 2008, I was I was very sick. I, I was in a long-term uh, hospitalization situation. Actually, I wasn't hospitalized that more. I was transferred to a hospice uh, to die and I really couldn't do very much uh, so my spouse was printing out uh, financial news stuff for me to read from the internet uh, because he knew that I like to read that stuff that's my background economic trends forecasting and all that stuff and I've always uh, since the early 80s enjoyed keeping keeping an eye on that sort of thing. And I could see very clearly, immediately, just by things he was showing me randomly, that uh, a big crash was coming uh, soon. soon. So uh, when I could, when I felt up to it, I wrote, uh, because I had no internet at that time where I was also, I wrote uh, regular first class letters to friends and family and people I cared about in the United States and I told them look you know pay off your debts sell everything you can you know your extra stuff raise some cash do some prepping if you want to call it that get your passport in order simplify your life there's a very very bad crash coming and I got called a lot of names you know, really, I got called crazy. Also here in France, you know, that I was paranoid and stuff like that. And uh, 
it was rather painful for for people who had known me for decades in the states, particularly family, to have them say, you know, they know my my professional background and stuff, to have them say, well, you know, you're you're nutty. But you know, they were warned, and um, yeah, they they really blew me off. What what was uh, upsetting for me and what still is now is how a couple years into it they had just freaked out you know and a lot of these people are my age I'm 55 or older than I am and this is not the first recession that they've seen you know they've been through this before you know, we get one, what, about every nine years in the United States? You know, uh, I've seen five major recessions in my lifetime on two continents. And, uh, you know, these things happen, especially especially in the United States, where I spent the first thir- 37 years of my life. Um, and now it's like just under four years into the crash of... September 2008, if you want to use that as a starting point, why not? And um, I just can't believe how resigned and dejected so many Americans are. And I don't think that they can understand that in places such as France, uh, also I have contacts in Spain, Portugal, Italy, uh, Turkey, uh, Sweden, England, uh, uh, not actively in England right now, excuse me, passively in England, Um, some other countries. Uh, The economy here in France has been sluggish for a long time now. Uh, We had something here called Les Tantes Glorieuses the 30 glorious years, which were in France from about the mid-50s until about the mid-80s. And we were in full expansion then. Unemployment was extremely low. Uh, my father-in-law, if he, didn't, if he got a new job and he didn't like it, at the end of the day, he would go to see the boss and just say, you know, I just... I just really need to be paid for today only. Sorry, this isn't going to work out. And the boss was like, okay, cool. You know, bye. And he would go find another job. You know, I remember things being that way uh, for me here in France and in the United States, even though France is more sluggish. You have to understand we are not under the same legal system as the United States. We are not under the same political system. Um... We're not under, I cannot stress this enough, we're not under Anglo-Saxon law. Um, People still have a lot of frugality over here. They tend to think very, very long term, generations ahead even. Um, There's a parliament in France. You know, uh, a lot of what you may think you know about French history you probably don't know. You probably think the French Revolution. You probably think there was only one, and it was this big success and everything. You know, it's not your fault. It's not your country. Okay, um, but this is a whole different ball of wax over here. And if things are sluggish or slow or there are problems, um, people seem to, in my opinion, here in France, uh, th- this is where I live. Um, they're they're much more calm about it usually much more philosophical they try to be constructive about it they do love complaining over here by the way complaining and you know quietly groaning and they don't really do that much about it that's another matter but um, I I keep hearing uh, from Americans who are very concerned about political and economic things right now. And they're not all that concerned about ecological things, which I think are much more important and will have a much more serious impact on them. 
and I'm just astonished to see Americans be so spineless, so many of them. Not all of them, but so many of them, like, meh, 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 meh. you know, things have gotten so rotten in the last 20 years or whatever. Give me a break. I just reread uh, City of Nets by Otto Friedrich, which is ostensibly about Hollywood in the 1940s, but it's a great book that came out around 1986. And it really squeezes a lot of U.S. 20th century history in there, plus some other parts of the world. And, you know, if you think they're spitting on the Constitution now, you remember what they did to Japanese Americans during World War II, right? A lot of them were second and third generation citizens. They put them in camps. Those people lost everything. And nothing was, nothing was done to compensate them and Americans just they just went along with it you know and then they, you see the whole anti-communist brainwashing thing that goes way back to the 20s uh, because communism uh, such as French communism was for workers rights and we couldn't have that in the USA could we so really you know these things just repeat that's, I think, one of the points that I want to make. You know, we, we don't study history. History, as we know it, is a lie, of course, and history is written by the victor, or victors. But we can make an effort to learn from quality sources what happened and get a bigger picture and do something constructive about it. And... I got a lot of flack in the United States in the early 90s when I told people who I had been telling for several years that I was going to expatriate, that the U.S. just wasn't working for me anymore, and rather than stay there and be unhappy, I was going to leave. You know, I, I got treated like some kind of freak or traitor, and I still get messages now people saying things like, good, stay over there, we don't need you. Hello, um, you did need me. Uh, I worked, I contributed to the system, I got my education over there, and the fact that things weren't working for me again and again through no fault of my own, um, th that's not good. That's not good. And Lord knows I tried. But when I saw, like, in the early 90s that NAFTA was going to be passed, um, I think that's North American Free Trade Alliance, something like that, I remember my father in Ohio was very, very upset. And I remember what that guy said, um, whose name I can't remember, uh, Ross Perot, about the giant sucking sound as the jobs go out of the U.S. I remember the ads in the 1980s on TV, free ads, you know, warning us about um, what was going to happen if we didn't buy made in the USA, and uh, also about how debt was going to crush us, and our children and grandchildren would have no future, and we would end up in penury. And a lot of people didn't pay any attention to that. You know, they were busy doing their 1980s things such as hands across America stupid kind of stunts and um, sorry to keep harping on that but that really bothered me you know when when I saw stuff like that I just thought I I think I, I, I have to move to Europe um, so I would say to you people look it's not going to be easy it's never been easy um, don't paint too bleak a picture because yeah you might be screwed and your children might be screwed and I'm sorry about that but are you just going to take it lying down or are you going to grab a gun and run around like some freak and do something violent which I also don't agree with you know you can either focus and have a an attention span of longer than about four minutes which is about the average for Americans I think it's about 25 minutes in the rest of the world. Shame on us. Um, are, you gonna, are you going to do something about this? 
Or are you just going to throw in the towel and blame others and say, well, you know, this rotten system. Look, the system didn't work for me either. Um, and there's really no use in me crying over spilled milk. As painful as it was for me to leave and to <laughs> live in to live in in the conditions I did for the first ten years I was over here, it was hard, especially when you're not a kid anymore. But you have to do what you have to do, and I hope you're all listening to me, and I hope you get it together and don't put things off and uh Please send a video response if you like, and have a good day. Bye.